right, we are back. And this is a, so this is technically what, episode 14? Because 13 was the live that we did. Is that yep. right? That's right. I think so. Yeah. So for those of you guys that are watching right now, if you missed the live last week, we did a live on Instagram because I was in Japan and it was just was not uh, doable for me to get the, the software and all that kind of stuff up. So we just went live on Instagram. So if you missed that, feel free to go check that out. Um, we talked a lot about um, Hawaii and what Japan was feeling like at that point. I hadn't competed yet, um, but it was, yeah, it was, it was fun. <laughs> so Japan just got better from there. <laughs> I was going to say, it turned out to be a wonderful weekend, which we thought it was. So that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So why don't you go into that? Let's start with that. Yeah. So um, the, the whole trip itself was just awesome. Like I just had a really good time. Um you know, I, did, I made the most of my time there. Uh, I was there for a week. So I went and did some sightseeing and all that kind of stuff. And then all the show stuff started on Saturday with check-ins. So they had an amateur Olympia attached to this. So they were already going as of like Friday. They were, or they were already going on the show and stuff, but the pros were on on Sunday. So Saturday um, afternoon was our check-ins. So, um, went over there, it was already like the whole place was packed out because they had the amateurs going on and everything as well. Um, so just having that kind of energy and that vibe, even when you walked in was awesome. Um, literally like as soon as you walk in, they would check your name, like they checked my name on the little list, like, oh, you're a pro. And so they grabbed somebody and that was like your escort to take you through the whole thing. Right. So they take you, the escort took you through the entire, um, my dad is calling me right now. So I told him not to call me. My dad. Oh, my God. You guys don't understand. Mine, <laughs> mine too, has the worst timing. The worst yes. timing. Always. Uh, but anyway, I'm just going to let that go to voicemail. And hopefully I can turn it, that I can turn it on and do not disturb. Um, but anyway. Um, yeah, an escort. So, yeah. <laughs> so, we had an escort. So, that was really cool because they took you through. Because the, there's, there's an expo and everything attached to the whole the whole thing. And, um uh, Okay, there we go. Now we're on. Do not disturb. We're good. Um, so um, they took you through the whole expo, took you down the stairs, uh, had you sign the wall. Like that's my new profile picture on uh, on Insta or on uh, Instagram and on Facebook. Like if you look right above my head, that's my name that's signed on the wall right there on the Japan Pro. <laughs> You so, have your name signed somewhere else, too. Uh, yeah, I do. I do. At, at your gym as well. At my um, gym. Yep, yep. <laughs> and actually at the at the powerhouse gym in Japan, too. So, you know, cool. it's, it's, I'm getting around. So, you are. Um, <laughs> getting around. That was, I know. That was the cool part, too. So I forgot about that. So I went to uh, the powerhouse gym um, a couple days out from the show. And they were like a, a sponsor, basically, of the show because it's Hidetata's show. And that was his, that's his gym, the powerhouse gym. So as soon as you walk in and you tell them that you're a pro, they gave you this t-shirt with IPV Pro written all over it and everything. I was like, this is perfect. I'm like, this is, it was a huge t-shirt for like big bodybuilders. Uh, but, you know, it was great for tanning. It was fantastic for tanning. So that's what I used it for. Um, I always get extra large shirts when they like yeah. allow us to pick. I'm like extra large. I want a pump cover. <laughs> oh, absolutely! It was it was like a dress. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so anyway, so we go in and we you know we sign the wall, all of that. Media everywhere, like everywhere, freaking TV shows, everything like that. Like it was crazy. Like the amount of media coverage they had at the show. Um, you know, they did the whole uh, check-in process and everything like that. And um, it was, you know, just special the way they did it and everything. And actually, I mean, I'm wearing the little jacket. So I wore my little my little Japan Pro jacket. And it's got the, the IFV logo on the back. So they and, gave you guys that at yes. check-ins? Yeah. They gave wow. us that at check-ins. And then they also gave us, a, like, a commemorative medal. So this is my, I don't know if you can see that. There you go, Japan Pro wow. medal. That's really so, cool. and it's got the whole like dates and everything on the back and all that kind of stuff. We had all this at check-ins. They had all the posters lined up, so we went down the line and signed all the posters and everything too. This so is literally like the Olympia. This is hundred percent Olympia athlete check-in. You get your medal. You hundred percent. Yeah. It was exactly. I was like, this is an Olympia, and it's like you know, he has been to the Olympia however many times. So, and Iris too, Iris Kyle. Am so I thinking their of show. the same the same guy that just won the Masters, Masters Olympia? And yeah. so he owns the one in Las Vegas as well. Mm, yes, yes, they do. Okay. They have a power. I, yes, perfect. Right. I met them last year at the Olympia. Yeah, so awesome. I 
and now that you say that, so I'm not sure if he owns the one in Tokyo or not. I'm 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 assuming so. I don't know. I don't know sure if he's affiliated. Yes, affiliated his, his pictures on the on the the sign. So yeah, okay, he's affiliated in some way or another. Great, great uh, team couple. Yeah, Is there a couple. Yeah, okay, I think so. I think yeah. So. Um, uh, <laughs> so, but so they, you know, obviously, you know, Iris is the most winning Olympia athlete ever. So, you know, between the two of them, they, they know how to put on a show basically. Um, so we did the whole check-in process and, and, um, and all of that. And I was like, wow, if this is what the check-in process is going to be like, I can't wait to see the show. Right. Stage, yeah. <laughs> so wow. the only thing that, that was, that was bad about having the, um, amateur olympia is that we weren't able to get on the stage like i like to try to get on the stage prior to the show and like feel it and all that kind of stuff so we weren't able to do that because they had the show still going on on the stage so they changed the the staging and stuff up for us as pros the following day um, as far as lighting and background all that stuff is concerned um and we didn't know what was going on at all as far as that setup was concerned until we were in line going on stage so it's like it's literally almost like what they did at the Olympia, where you just have to walk out there just just to hold your breath. You know what I mean? So, um, so we didn't know anything. Um, but then, so we're backstage and everything for the day of the show, um, and they're you know it was just it was just they treated us like we mattered, which was cool. You know what I mean? Um, and like we're standing back there, and they they're super organized, like like. Be in, we're like in line, ready to go, like boom, 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 like with like 20 minutes ahead of time, all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Completely um, different as well from Hawaii the weekend before. I mean, everything was completely different, but completely. especially like the show set up and your experience yeah. and the yes. taking care of you. Good. Now, the only thing that I will say that that was, it was a good thing and a bad thing because I just did it on, just out of whim. I started to glaze myself and pump because they didn't tell us to. They just all of a sudden came back like, okay, we're going and getting in line. And I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, well, it's a good thing I put my glaze on. <laughs> it's like, it's a good thing I started all of this and I'm good. Um, because otherwise I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't have known otherwise. Um, so anyway, so we're in line and, and we're standing back there and I was number eight. So I had a handful of girls ahead of me to go on stage. Um, but just, I, I'm st we're standing there and I'm like, oh my God, this production is ridiculous. Like... So they tell you exactly what to do. Like the guy standing at the side, he's like, I'm gonna, he's like, I got my hand in front of you. He's like, when I move my hand and tell you to go, you're gonna walk out there and you're gonna stand in your first pose and wait for the lights to hit you. So you literally, like, they've got the, like, you saw my, my video. You have chills. Yeah, right they, you saw my video. You, you hear the announcer, you know, starting out that your name and all that kind of stuff. And at that point, you are in the shadows. That's where those silhouette photos come into play. You're in the shadows when you're on stage and you're in your pose that you wanna hit for that silhouette shot. And then the lights come up. And that's when the music starts and they scream your name and like the freaking crowd. I'm telling you, this venue was as big as like an Olympia venue and it was wall to wall packed. I mean, packed wow. and all the way to the back, all the way to the sides, people with their cameras and everything all over the place. So the lights come up and they hit you, right? Super bright. Can't see a fucking thing. <laughs> Maybe that's a good thing nothing i didn't know where the judges were i didn't know i didn't know what the, the audience looked like nothing had no clue so that was a little bit like i wish i had had like a run through of that because i feel i feel like i probably would have been a little bit better on my presentation if we knew that's what was going to happen yeah. but with that i was like ah, uh, here we are you know what i mean so went up and hit my whole routine um and then like my husband was back home watching it so he was actually screen recording it and everything for me back home so i was able to watch it while i was backstage um did you see before you came out how they had the shuffling of all, everybody's yeah I, yeah i saw that i saw that um for the, uh, the girls ahead of me right yeah so i had no idea okay. what picture they had chosen for me or anything like that it was a photo from your pro last last year yeah. So, but yeah, that was really cool. I was like, oh my God, like, and you know, it's just simple things like that. Like it doesn't take a lot of extra time to be able to put those together for the athletes, no. but it just makes it so friggin' cool. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, that's, that's just, it was just amazing. Right. Like it's just, look, it, again, looked like an Olympia production. Um, so did the whole routine. Um, I felt like it went well. I, I even I felt like I bobbled it a little, but then when I looked at the video, I was like, it doesn't look like I did that. So Not at all. I was like, all right, cool, we're good, you know. Um, really enjoyed that. The 
the, the part that was interesting was from the, the point where you are with the, the silhouette, where you hit the silhouette up to where you walk to the box. That's a long walk. It was. Right? It was About a long 10 steps. walk. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, that for me, I was like, this is the worst, the worst part because I'm really thick from the front. So you don't want to like, be too square as yeah. you're walking. So I was like, all right, I got to, well, I got to wiggle my hips, man. I got to make these hips go. So I was like, it is what it I is. I think it looks good. Gonna, yeah, I agree. I, know, I agree. I knew exactly what you were trying to do. And as soon as you hit that, I was like, I wonder how much she's going to twist here. Because I know, I know how much you got to, yeah. and it, it, but it didn't look forced. It looked really natural. Well, what I did when I was standing backstage and watching everything backstage for the, the seven girls ahead of me, I went back to my pageant days and I was like, all right, I got to pull out the, the runway walk. I just have to, you know what yeah. I mean? And then what I focused on again was wiggling my hips and keeping my core tight because I knew if I didn't keep my core tight going forward, it was going to look like I had a little pooch, right? So kept my core tight, kept my hips wiggling. That's, I was like, that's what I got to do. <laughs> mind, of, mind of muscle connection from the yep. legend days. <laughs> that's right. So I was like, you know, thankfully I had that, I've done that before, but like, that's literally something that, that through the practice of my posing with Jamie and stuff like that too, we've minimized that walk as much as we can because I'm straight from the front and I'm not curved in in the front. <coughs> Excuse me still have congestion um so i would assume with all your travel around i know yeah um so i was like you know that's one of the reasons why i put my hand on my hip when i walk and all that kind of stuff you know that to try to create that illusion and all of that you know what i mean so um so yeah so that was the one thing i was like oh this is the long walk up front <laughs> I was like, oh, well it worked um god bless the first girl in line i know right she's the, know. She's the one that you know that yeah just has to go for everybody it. Yeah, mm -hmm. just has to go with it. So there was that, and then we, you know, came out and did call outs. There was thirty girls in this show. That's thirty. Big. That's a, that's it was a big. Great show. That's awesome. It was How many big. Americans. Uh, three. Okay. You act well. Is Ashley considered? Yeah, Ashley, okay. and then and Eureka. Okay. Yep. And that's is that yeah that was that was it. There was nobody else from the U.S. Okay. Um, cool. and then you know a lot of girls from Japan, China. Um, there was a couple from Australia. There was, you know, uh, Carrie was from UK. Uh, there was another one from, gosh, where was Alexander from? Somewhere in Europe. I can't remember exactly where. Poland? Cool. Poland. Cool. So there was, you know, there's people from all over the place, right? Yeah. So, um, then judging went and the judging was great. I mean, it was, um, Steve is head judge and then, you know, Tyler was there as well. So you knew you were going to get good judging feedback too. You know, that was, that was one of the reasons why I was excited about this show too, because the last time I'd gotten on stage in front of Tyler was New York. Um, and I know I have improved since New York, so I kind of wanted to get some feedback and that kind of thing. What um, do you say? Well, when I went to him after the show, um, he was like, you just have, I was, he's like, you just need more lower body. I was like, I know, I go, I know. I'm like, I got these long ass legs. He just started laughing. <laughs> I was like, I get it. And it was, it, he focused more so on the legs, even than the glutes. Um, you know, he's like, yeah, you can, you can use more glutes, obviously. He's like, but they'll fix the legs. And I, he I wants like quad, quad and like calf, like just to yeah. kind of wrap. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. You could do that. That's easy. And you know, and the thing is too, like, I really saw that being next to these Asian girls because they're all so short and compact. Um, and I looked like a freaking string bean standing next to him. I really right. did. So I was like, all right. Yeah, I totally see that. <laughs> I was like, I get it. hundred yeah. percent. Um, and then, so the other part that, um, oh, before I get into more feedback stuff. So we went through pre-judging, all of that, blah, 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 we're done. Um, judged everyone, did a fantastic job with the judging. And then, so we're just sitting backstage. We have a couple a couple hours because um, men's physique has to go, uh, men's bodybuilding has to go, then they have a short break, and then we start with finals. So um, thankfully, I didn't go anywhere because <laughs> I didn't know that they were going to do this. But as soon as Ben's bodybuilding was over with, they brought all of us bikini girls back out on stage and did the pose down. Which but we don't do pose down we in don't do pose downs in the States. No, we don't do pose downs. So I was like, I didn't even know this was a thing. I didn't know this was going to happen. Um, and oh, then like they didn't, didn't know at all. No, we didn't wow. know. We didn't know. We're like, what is this? We don't understand. <laughs> so what do I did. <laughs> was I, like, I was like, do we pose? Like, what do we, what do we actually do? Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. We're like, we don't know. So they, they had us all go on stage. We just kind of looked pretty, right? Did a couple of turns, and we were all on stage at one time. And again, the audience was packed out at this point. 
media freaking cameras all over the place all that kind of stuff um and then we took like you know pretty pictures with you know the the peace signs and they do they do this whatever this is in japan this is their thing like that's like the peace sign in the u.s it's like whatever this is i don't know what that is i should google it and find out what that is because i don't know what that is we might be okay. yeah we might be disrespecting someone right no now. we're not we're not just that, no that's literally like they had us all do this like that's okay. their thing the, the, that's their thing yeah i don't okay. know i it's like it's like a peace sign in, in the u.s i think okay basically okay. So, um, so anyway, so we did that, um, and then we all went off stage and then they started with finals and then they did the confirmation round. So no routines at finals, but we did do confirmation of scoring and all that. So everybody got rejudged, got rejudged again, kind of thing. Um, and we were all on stage at that point. They didn't have us in diagonals. They had us in a big circle on the stage. So we all had like space to be seen. Cool. Because on the side diagonals during pre-judging, it was two lines on each side because of how thick it was. So they just took everybody and spread everybody out. So everybody had space. Um, I don't think they rescored finals, but they did rejudge it. So okay. something people don't know is a lot of times what judges will do at finals is they will rescore like the top five or top four or whatever, who's in the, the hunt for those money spaces, you know, and they'll give scores. Um, at finals and add the two together. But if you're outside of that, they don't actually rescore you. But if they think that you improved your look from, from prejudging or something like that, they will reflect that in how they move you on stage. Yes. So a good example of that was Carrie um, from the UK. So she and I got along really well the whole, the whole um, week. And she's like, well, at finals, she's like, they put me in the middle of second call out which would put her in the like the five, six possession position, right? Um, and, I, and I said, yeah, I said, but they probably didn't rescore it. Now, what they did do is they, they you know, she went and got feedback from Tyler and Tyler did tell her, this, I was talking to her after her feedback. Tyler did tell her she looked better at finals. She was tighter at finals. So they moved her from where she was in 12th place for the scoring at prejudging into the, the, the four, five, or I'm sorry, fifth, sixth, somewhere in there. Somewhere between somewhere between sixth to eighth is where she ended up to the final. She cut it in half. Right, right. So, you know, her, her placing didn't reflect that, but the way they moved her on stage did, right? They noticed that she came back looking better for finals. So that's, you know, something that you guys can take as a competitor too. Like, don't come back looking, come back to finals looking like shit because they will actually push you out. And, they and she's getting more. ready to get Taiwan this weekend, and she's a favorite for that show. Yep, yep, Taiwan. Yep. Okay. Um, so, and she had something similar go on with her this past week that I had in Hawaii. She has PMDD, so she has a lot of issues with hormonal stuff too. So she was in the thick of it for Japan. So she's hoping by the time she gets to Taiwan, that will be pretty much sorted out. Kind of like what happened with me. Um. So, anyways, that, and that was that was it. So the judging was all done. All that Ashley did win the show. Um, the girl that came in second looked phenomenal. Um, in general, like the girls, everybody looked great. Like they, I was really surprised at how much muscle a lot of these girls carried, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, the girl that came in second looked really good. I would say she probably needs to trim her quads down a little bit. Um, and then other than that, I wouldn't really change a whole lot. Maybe adjust a couple of posing things. There was a lot of things in this particular show where like posing and presentation and suits and things like that, those were problems. Um, because again, they're, they're Asian girls and they're not girls that are getting feedback from people here in the States. Right. Um, there was one girl, oh my God, I felt terrible. She was in first call out. She looked phenomenal, but she wore a light pink suit. And as she was going to get on stage, her tan got onto her suit and it looked like she shit her pants. Like it was, it was bad. Like it was, it was bad. She came back to finals with a different suit on because it Thank was, God she had one. Yeah. Like it was, it was all tan. So if anybody sees her photos, it was, she did not poop her pants. <laughs> it was just the tan got all over it. And oh my God. I was like, she still got her first call out. She still did well. I think she ended up in like somewhere in the six to eight range, somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, but still, I mean, I don't know, like in front of all those people, like those photos are on NPC news online forever. Like, Guys, don't wear light colored suits. That was, was a perfect you, example. I was going to ask you, so from your professional opinion, obviously I know, and I'm sure you do too, from judges, promoters, they do not like pink suits. And mm -hmm. and, my, and this is such a hard conversation to have with an athlete because girls love pink. 
Yeah. And and some girls can wear a pink suit, but yep. it's it's very specific. Brandy uh, Lewis being one of yes. them. That color is very specific to her and it looks fantastic on her. So what's your thought on pink suits? I like pink suits if your skin tone can carry it off. You know, just okay. like you said, like if you have a darker skin tone. Um, I also like pink suits on master's competitors because I feel like they make that make you look a little bit more youthful. Youthful. Right? Um, cool. Yep. So, um, but they need to be a depth of pink. You know, this girl, hers was like a light, light pink, like a, okay. like an Easter bunny type pink, you know? Yeah. It's just, um, you think it's too light and you need yeah. that pop and that dimension. Yes. It was almost white. Off. Yeah. It was almost yeah. white. It was that light. Okay. And that's, and that's okay. why the tan showed up so much. Yeah. I mean, I mean it was a white suit on stage. <laughs> no way. I would, I would get that everywhere. I feel bad for the men's physique guys when they're like putting their hands on their head. Yeah. They have like a white. We talked about we talk about that all the time. Like they get they get tan all over their all white over. shorts, and, and they're they're ruined after that. You can't wear yeah. that. Yeah, anyway, absolutely. Sorry. So, <laughs> but yeah, but there was there was a lot of that. There was a lot of really bad tans, really bad tans. Oh goodness. Did, so thank so, God you didn't use a company or yeah. you did it yourself. Thank God. And honestly, like, and I talked to you about this. I feel like this was my best tan I've ever had. Yeah. Um, so I can go into that a little bit real quick. So the first thing is to address is I have tan spots underneath my glutes and I get that. I always have that. It's a catch 22. I was mentioning this before. Um, that's what we call the sit bones, right? So you sit in that area all day long. So it tends to be a little bit drier because you're, you know, it's almost like you're rubbing your pants against it all the time, that kind of thing. Um, so it wasn't a problem going into Hawaii because I, I knew that that was a, a concern. And so I was over moisturizing that area really. So, um, so it worked out fine for Hawaii. But then what happened after that is that because I had the tan on there, it absorbed into those areas more, just like it does for your elbows and your knees and things like that. It absorbed into that area more than anywhere else. So I was exfoliating, trying to get rid of it. But the problem then when you exfoliate is now your skin's even drier. So now when you put the tan back on, it absorbs even more. Yeah. So doing the back-to-back -back shows just made it really difficult. I couldn't get rid of it. There was nothing I could do. I tried. You know, I, I really over-moisturized as much as I could, but it just didn't didn't do anything. Um, well, especially put, with being in the cold weather. You're probably yes. drier anyway. I was drier anyway. Plus, being in Japan, I was taking Epsom salt baths every day. Um, you know, that was yeah. making my skin even drier, which was good for the rest of the tan. The rest of the tan absorbed amazingly well, but so did that area. So <laughs> if it wasn't like a back-to-back -back show, I don't think it would have been a problem. But because it was, I didn't have time in between to, to really moisturize that area, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so um, with the tan, what I did with this time around was on Saturday, I did a hand-applied um, coat. And then Sunday, because the show was Sunday, Sunday morning I got up, or I'm sorry, Saturday after the, after the hand applied coat, I let that dry and I put a light spray tan coat on top. Saturday morning, my tan was pretty much flawless. So I didn't need to, I didn't need to rinse. So I was saying, I was like, I'm sorry, Sunday morning, I'm getting all the days mixed up. So the Sunday show. So yeah. so yeah, so Sunday morning I got up, my tan was flawless. So I didn't, I didn't rinse. I was like, I'm good. I'm just going to put another coat on top. So that's what I did. I put another light coat on top. And it all just sucked right into my skin. Um, I had all day because we weren't on stage for pre-judging until two, three, whatever it was, whatever. I think it was, it was something like that. Anyway, late in comparison <laughs> to eight, and in, compar in comparison to eight a.m. You yeah. know, yeah. So it had it had time to absorb and develop. Um, and then when I did the the glaze, I did the glaze myself, and I just used the liquid sunrise glaze. I just patted it on. Okay. I didn't rub it. Like the, the issue in Hawaii was they rubbed the glaze. You so, started getting the flakes. Yeah. yeah. So I just took, yeah. So I just took the glaze and I just patted it on and I really concentrated on just getting on my glutes, on my shoulders, you know, the areas where you really want to pop everything. Um, and then the rest of it, like I didn't put anything on my back. You don't see my back, so you don't need it. You know, um, my legs, that kind of thing, just patting it. So it ended up looking really good on stage. It was, it was right where it needed to be. Um, <clears throat> no, I think my tan could have, uh, there was a couple spots, like I said, under my glutes and things like that, but in general, it was like the best, best tan I've had because I, I didn't have any like smushing or anything like that. So, um, I felt like my look in general, all the way around was the best look I've ever had. So 100%. Yeah. I was really, 
really thrilled with with what I put on stage. Really, From the really hair happy. to the purple yes. suit to the tan yep. to the amount of muscle to the amount of conditioning to the glaze. I mean, all of it just all of it. came together perfectly. And I know Hawaii, you know, was terrible for you yep. and you literally nothing went right. But for your first show of the season to learn all of that in one yeah. show and then yeah. have a complete 180 wasn't a total loss. I think you no. learned a lot from that show and you're going to carry a lot of this with you into next season. Yeah. And, then, and again, that's why I vlogged everything too, because I can look back on it and, t- and take notes, you know what I yeah. mean? And know what worked and know what didn't and all those kinds of things. I, again, I learned about the tan thing, like from Hawaii, my, Hawaii, my tan was a wreck, you know what I yeah. mean? Versus, versus Japan. Um, you know, I went with the straight hair in Japan and it was funny. I put this on my stories yesterday. So I'm backstage posing and I realized that my hair is hitting the top of my glutes because I went yes. straight. Yeah, well, it was straight versus curly, and I was like, "Oh, that's not good." I was like, "Because I critique girls on this all the time." <laughs> I was like, "I was like, I can't, have, I can't have my hair hitting my glutes." So I had my scissors. And I just went chop, 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 right across. I was like, "It is what it is." Bye bye. So it worked, you know. Um, I was like, you know, it's just one of those things. I, I know I'm not the only one to have to do that in the past. I've done it for other girls. I know I've seen other coaches backstage. James Atlas hair. does it all the time. Yeah, I've seen it. I'm like, you just don't, you don't want your hair hitting your glutes. I mean, it just no. is what it is. So we, gotta, we wanna see your waist. That's part, yep. of, that's part of the judging criteria. <laughs> that's right, absolutely. I was like, if I'm gonna critique people on it, I better do it myself. <laughs> absolutely. You don't want to, have to critique your own show on Monday. <laughs> I know. Like that darn shot. Her hair is too long. I know. So, and then, you know, the other thing that people have been mentioning is like when I put the comparison shots from Hawaii to Japan, everybody's been saying your your poses are exactly the same. I was like, yeah, because I freaking practiced them like nobody's tomorrow. Like, I know, I know what my poses are. I know what my angles are, all those kinds of things. Um, my own personal critiques, like I said, I felt like I could have kept my core a little bit tighter on a couple of my transitions. Um, I think I did well when I was in my poses. I didn't have a problem in my poses, but there was a couple of transitions where I was like, ooh, I could have been a little tighter right there. I could have been a little tighter right there. So just little things that I can fix personally. Um, I felt like, in like I said, in general, everything was right where I needed to be. I had the, the, the drops in my hamstrings. Could I have been a little bit tighter if I had a little bit more muscle? I think I could have been a little bit, a little bit crisper. Key. That's key. But yeah, yeah, but I don't think... If I was leaner, I don't think it would have been better. You know what I mean? I think, I think you would have been too stringy. Correct. And this, and I go back to, like I said, my feedback in Hawaii was I have enough size. I just need to be better conditioned, right? My feedback in Japan was I need more size, right? So the reason why is because I was better conditioned. Correct. So we go back to when you get leaner, you start looking smaller a lot of times. And, ha- and how the feedback can change in one week. Yes. And I saw it. I mean, you could see the, the good thing about Hawaii is my lower body did look better balanced with my upper body because I was thicker. Yeah. Because I was thicker. Yeah. You know, that I wasn't in condition. I wasn't in shape. I was sure. But the, the, the shape of my physique was better balanced. So, you know, when I look at my feedback from Tyler where he says I need more legs, he's right. I mean, I do. I need more muscle. I need a layer of muscle on there. If I have that other layer of muscle on, on my legs and my glutes, then I'm going to be better balanced with my upper body when I'm in stage condition. Right? What was the difference of weight on stage in Hawaii to Japan? Six pounds. So, guys, you got to take that, too, in consideration. You Six know, pounds. Like that, yeah. that is a lot of water that yes. you pulled off and, and a lot of you know, a good amount, of, a good amount, of, probably a pound of fat. Right. You know, within yeah. a week. Yeah, within um, a week. I mean, especially when your, when your metabolism is kicked in. Yeah. Um, and I had a lot of activity in Japan from walking and things like that too. So yeah, I definitely, I mean, a lot of it was inflammation that just dropped. Yeah. But I think, you know, probably about a pound of it was probably body fat too. Yeah. But the judges on that day are looking at your shape and they're saying, yeah, you have enough muscle just coming tighter. But then when you're actually coming up and showing a condition, thank God it was in front of Tyler. And now they can actually see the appropriate amount of muscle with the appropriate amount of fullness, with the appropriate amount of conditioning. And it's like, no, you actually do need more muscle. That's right. Absolutely. (laughs) You know, that's why you have to be open to feedback every show too, because, you know, if I just said, okay, I'm good. I know I'm in better condition, whatever. And I left, you know, you just don't get that extra eye, you know, and I wanted that. I wanted to know, you know, what to do next. Now, going back to once all this was said and done, and I got the feedback. I said, Tyler, I said, you know, the other thing I'm thinking is I need to go to master's. I said, because I am 42. I'm like, these girls are 20 years younger than me, you know, just is what it is. 
at the end of the day. I was like, but I said, my, my concern is, is I've always been one of the softer girls on stage and open. And I know once you go to masters, girls just get even harder, you know, so I'm going to be soft. And uh, he said, yeah, he said, uh, but he goes, you have a balanced physique. He goes, and if you bring in a balanced, balanced physique with good conditioning, he's like, you're going to beat girls that are harder. He's like, it just is what it is. So, um, so he's like, he said, yes, that masters was the direction to go. So that was, you know, that was really where my head was anyway. Like I really wanted to be able to say, okay, I can nail my look at the open stage. Like I really wanted to be able to say that before I decided to go and fully transition over to the master stage. Um, and I was able to do that in Japan. So I was happy about that. Like that was like, okay, I can put a exclamation point on this and I can move on. Now, that's not to say I won't compete in the open still, because I think no, I, yeah. I still like I like doing that. I like to see what my physique looks like next to the younger girls and things like that, too. But I have to be realistic. We always talk about this. You know, you have to be realistic with yourself. A, like, I know my genetics. I know I have these long-ass legs, and most girls don't. I know that. B, I'm 20 years older than all the girls that I'm standing next to. Of course I'm going to look different. You know what I mean? Um, and the way that I, I see myself now... Um, I'm like, I can be competitive in the master's um, ranks, just even where I am now, because of a lot of things. Like, I have a good shape, but I have good skin. You know, we talked about waist. The skin. Yes. They look a the lot skin. about waist control in the master's. 100%. Yep. Absolutely. And I was like, you know, I still, you know, and, and I'm not saying this to, to brag. This is not what I'm, I'm just saying this as critique. Personal being reflection. Realistic why. Wise, like when I look at my face and my skin and things like that, I still look like I'm an open competitor versus yes, a master's you're competitor. Still you. Absolutely. So, you know, it's just, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, at the end of the day, I'm like, I, I feel like even if I brought my look that I have right now to the master stage, I think it would still be competitive. Um, with that, anytime that I get on stage, I want to be better than the last time I got on stage. So I know my critique started to grow my glutes and grow my legs, my legs mostly. So that's what I'm going to do before I get back on stage, right? Perfect. So I want to go into the master's ranks knowing I could be top five win a show in master's, right? Yeah, the goals um, become a little bit more at that point. Correct. Yes. Yeah, as yes. they should. Oh, yes. Absolutely. So, you know, and like I said, I didn't said, know my, you were considering that. So yeah. thanks for sharing that here. That's, that's yeah. really cool. I think that's awesome. Well, it's one of those things, you know, in the back, it's always been in the back of my head. You know, sure. it's been in the back of my head, like, I, I understand, like I said, I said, I'm realistic about my, my goals. I'm realistic about what I can do and what I can't. And I get that. You know what I mean? Um, and I always said to myself, I was like, I just want to feel like I brought my best to the stage. I just want to feel like I brought my best. Hawaii was, was a train wreck because I felt like I, I, I didn't even come close. You know what I mean? And then when, after doing Japan, I was like, oh, I feel so much better about life. You know what I mean? Like, cause I finally hit what I was what I've been wanting to hit for years, you yes. know, and that's not to say that I won't get better from here, but right now I know this was the best that I could have brought. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And, and that's that exciting that happy. you can only get better. That's right. Especially since you're willing to take some time off right now and grow the, grow the glutes before you come back, you know, you yep. can only get better from here and you've right. now hit your peak or not your peak, your best so far in your that's right. And the goal it should, and I say this to people all the time, that should always be your goal. Every time you get on stage, you should be better. You know, that's the only thing you have under your control. You don't have under your control how you're going to place. You don't have under your control who shows up. You don't have under your control any of those things. All you have under, under your control is what you physically put on stage. Yep. And for me, that was my best. And that's what I wanted. Um, and that for me makes it, makes it satisfying, makes it gratifying, makes it worth it. Um, Plus, I mean, just the show itself, like I said, I mean, I've been gushing over this show for the, the last week because it was just such a great experience. You know, just in general, I felt like as athletes, we were valued. You know what I mean? And like the coolest thing about, I, I think about doing it in Japan is their like physique and beauty standards and stuff are so different than here in the States where bikini and men's physique are their most popular divisions. Open men is not. Right. So, like, they have three pro divisions. They had bikini, men's physique, and open open bodybuilding. And that was the, the order. So it was bikini, men's physique, and open. After bikini was over, we went to the, to the lobby, and we were taking pictures and everything, right? 
And then the auditorium starts flooding out, like everybody's leaving. We're like, oh, it must be over. Let's go get our feedback, right? We go look in the auditorium. Men's Open was just starting. Men's Physique had just ended. And the majority of the audience left. It's very interesting. I wonder if it's because those are the two most attainable divisions. So that's the ones that they follow more. Well, they also like the more, like I was telling you guys about in the live, how they have those places where they go and the guys like dress like very feminine, things like that. Got it. To J Japanese culture, that look is more attractive. Got it. The one, you know, versus they don't like the, the, the big, huge, muscly guys. They just, yeah. they just don't like it. So it's intimidating. Yeah. So it was like, it was crazy to see because the crowd was, was nuts. Like they were screaming and yelling and like all sorts of stuff during bikini and during men's physique. None of that during open. Very like interesting. when, like when you see the people screaming for like Derek and Hottie and stuff like that, that's what you saw for men's physique and bikini, wow. but not for open. That's so cool. That energy walking out. So I know. <laughs> I yes. was like, this is awesome. <laughs> It was literally like it was like an Olympia. Wow. It was. I was like, this is better. It was better than the Olympia because the, like we were the main feature. You know what right. I mean? Like we were, yeah. we were it. We were the thing that they were there to see. You wow. know, like it was, it was awesome. I was like, I would go back in a heartbeat just for that reason. Yeah. You know, like it was just it again. The experience of the show itself was it was unreal. It was unreal. It matters. Yeah, absolutely. As athletes, we spend a lot of money on this sport. The travel like, to get there. I mean you especially yeah. but even even people that are flying across you know west coast to east coast you yeah. know someone giving you a shirt you know joe pishkula he gives everyone at, he just started doing this recently and everybody loves it he gets the shirts made with ifbb pro on the back and everybody yeah. walks out of there feeling like a million bucks it's yeah. something so small but it makes so everyone simple. feel so recognized and seen yep. and special and then they wear that shirt the day after yep. the show the jackets you know, yeah, we were wearing cool. these jackets around around Tokyo uh, after the show. We were wearing them around Tokyo. And people were stopping and asking for pictures because they recognized pictures. the IFBB logo in the back. Absolutely. Absolutely. They're, they're like, there's you're there. Like, they can't speak English, but they know bodybuilders. Bodybuilding. <laughs> they know how to say that. <laughs> yep. And it was so much fun. Like, it was like, like, we, like, you literally felt like a celebrity walking around. Like, it was you just. Are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In Japan. I'm like, I've got to go, gotta go move to Japan. <laughs> You gotta go across across the world to find your glutes, find your hamstrings, and be, be famous. <laughs> Literally the other side of the earth. Literally the other side of the earth. <laughs> so, like, but it was. I was like, I would one hundred percent go back and do that show. Like I said, in a heartbeat. Just because, again, we put so much time and effort into this. Like, it. You just want to feel like you're valued, and that was like, it was incredible. I've never, I've never been to a show where I felt that valued before. And it, was awesome. just, it was just awesome. It was just awesome. They did a they did a fantastic job with the whole setup. They did a fantastic job with the promotion. Like it was just it was just great, you know everything. So awesome. Hmm. I'm like now I know what the open men feel like. <laughs> I was like I get yeah. it. I understand now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Maybe let's bring that over to the United States. How can we create that culture here? <laughs> right. I know. So. Um, so yeah, so now we're now we're going into off season. Um, I'm actually calling Jane Newman to today. I'm gonna check in, uh, send the check in stuff this morning. But this is a good that. segue for our topic of today, which is which is reverse dieting. dieting. Yeah, so let's start with you. So how's your reverse going so far? My reverse is going very well. Um, good. I'm extremely proud of myself. This will be my fourth first or fourth reverse ever since I started competing. Uh, the first three, I absolutely blew. <laughs> um, so I made a commitment to myself uh, midway through the year, the season that was gonna follow my reverse. Whenever that came, I was starting to mentally prepare for that. And um, I wanted to talk to Jamie about my reverse before the Olympia even happened, because I yeah. wanted to come up with her expectations that she would have liked to see out of me verbalize my expectations that I would like to see out of myself for accountability. And I wanted to have that plan ready as soon as the Olympia was over. Um, so when we were at road to the Olympia, her and I sat down for an hour, we mapped out everything. You know, she told me, this is what I would like to see out of next year. I told her, this is what I need from you. One of those things. And this is something that we're going to talk about is I think it's really important when you're starting a reverse to communicate to your coach, what mentally, you're going to need 
post-show yeah. to be successful. So something that I asked her for was a very large macro increase right away. And I knew that if I knew that I had high macros, that I would not be as tempted to grab for other foods yeah. off plan. What I've struggled with in the past is, you know, these 30 gram bumps and 10 gram bumps here and there, and I'm still starving. And then I feel like I'm eating things off plan or trying to go out for more untracked meals. But if I brought my macros up higher, I wanted to see if I could keep my same foods and feel more satisfied and then grab for less. Yes. That has worked extremely well for me. Okay. Um, something that I also told her is that I need untracked meals as soon as possible. One untracked meal per week and however she wants to structure that. If she wants to bring my calories down on that day, whatever. She actually said, let's just pull, do it right away. Yeah. She had a lot of faith in me. And I think it's because I was coming to her and was so communicative about how I wanted to approach this. Mm -hmm. I also told her that I wanted to set a date. So eight weeks after the Olympia is December 15th. I told myself that I was going to be 85 to 90 percent just as intense as I was in prep until that date. And not to say on December 15th, I'm going to go out and out blow my diet. Honestly, I'm probably going to keep it the same, but I had that in my head as a very structured way of knowing, okay, as soon as Sunday, yep, your Olympia is over, you're right back on plan until December 15th, you are going to treat it just like a prep. Yeah. Um, so I, you guys, I, I posted my update yesterday. I didn't check in with her on Thanksgiving. I actually spiraled on Thanksgiving. I had to call her. I was following my reverse perfectly up to that point, yeah. up to the point that I was not going to celebrate Thanksgiving. And my uh -huh. husband said, honey, you need to call Jamie. Like you have been on track. One, yeah. Like you need a day. So I called Jamie. I was crying. She's like, Jordan, you have permission to fully enjoy Thanksgiving tomorrow yeah. and do not check in this week. Just like relax. So I actually ended up checking in with her yesterday um, because okay. I'm in Vegas right now. I'm getting ready to go to a, um, a really intense personal development course. I can't have my phone, so I'm not going to be able to check in with her on Friday like normal. And as of today, we were only up two pounds from Thanksgiving. So <laughs> Um, I'm managing right now around 123. Um, it's going super well. I was 119.8 on the Olympia stage. Um, so I'm really happy. I feel good. My energy is there. Honestly, my macros are in a really great spot. I don't feel too hungry or too food focused. And um, I'm, I'm excited. I'm proud of myself. Really, really good. proud of myself. At this point, I would have already been up 10, 12 pounds within no. two weeks after. So in the in the past, when you've done your verse and stuff like that, is that because you were restricting yourself so much and that's why you would kind of blow off at the end and just say, fuck it and grab whatever? So last year after the Olympia, after being in prep from January 1st to December 17th, yeah. I booked a seven-day cruise two days after the Olympia. Yeah. And I just said, F it. And I drank and I ate and tried to be mindful. But listen, you're on a cruise. So that I came back 15 pounds up after that trip. And then... Yeah. Um, after we came back, it came back down a little bit, and then I was averaging yeah. around nine. But still, it's too much. It was all body fat, you know, yeah. muscle at that point. It wasn't training and things like that. Um, the year before that, it was just I didn't – the macros were so low that I was just going out for free meals all the time. It was like this person didn't want – wanted to see me because they didn't see me for a year, so I would just go out and have whatever I wanted with them. And then the next day, I was going out and having dinner with my dad. And then the next day, I was going out and having dinner with Drew. And then before you know it, you're four meals in on in a one-week period, and we're now three weeks in, and you've had – mostly just on tracked meals. Yeah. Um, so I think it was the lack of that freedom and flexibility that yeah. I needed. Um, but again, the more I do this now and the more that I'm committed to this, I think this time it's like, I, you know, my family doesn't now have to see me after a show because I've managed it better during season to yeah. see them and stay on plan. And uh -huh. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. If I want a yeah. cookie the last three weeks, I've had a cookie. What I've yeah. noticed is that if I allow myself to have something or a bite of something, I don't feel the need to have the whole thing. Um, I told Jamie this in my check-in. I've never felt the ability to leave food on a plate or to be able to share a plate with someone. Drew yeah. and I, when we've gone out over the last few weeks, we've done a lot of sharing. Um, just... I don't know. It's just, it's so different this time. My mind is just in a completely different place, but it's taken four reverses to get here. It takes yeah. time. And I don't know, the goal's different this time. And, you know, the higher I go it, with the Naya BB Pro League, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, I'm not going to be putting on a ton of weight because I, I, I want to make sure I'm growing muscle and I don't have to have such a hard prep, you know? So I don't know. I'm just, I'm really proud, but I'm having some fun too. It's not, you know, after that Thanksgiving call with Jamie, I kind of, brought it down and yeah. relaxed a little bit and I'm really happy to see my weight around 123 because in recent years my body loves 135 
it, okay. it's always love 135 that's where i usually get my period back internal health is really good we got my lab work back my lab work is damn near perfect okay. um so I'm, I'm hopeful that i'll be able to stay leaner this year yeah and have internal health and balance yeah yeah and that's and for me you know being that i'm in my 40s that's a very important thing right um i only ever did a reverse diet last year right because prior to that reverse dieting when i was dieting for shows wasn't even a term it wasn't a thing. right right you know so last year was my first time coming back into prep after four years and reversing was a thing and i was like okay so this is something that i really want to do because i want it to be successful for my next year um because in previous years, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, reverse diet, dieting didn't exist. So you didn't get a plan. You just went and did whatever. And I would eat for like four weeks at a time. And it's just it's what it is, you know, and like people that just didn't manage that, you know. So last year I managed it pretty well. And this year I want to do basically the same thing. Um, when I came off my shows last year, similar to you, I said, I just want to have one meal a week where I don't have to track it, you know whatever that is not like i'm going to overeat but i just don't want to have to think about it i don't have to weigh things i just want to eat you know mental clarity mental freedom yeah yeah, yeah. so we did that we did that for about six to eight weeks or something like that um because the other the hardest part for me coming out of a show is that my hunger levels go through the roof like normally i'm not i'm not a hungry person like i'm fine i'm i'm good but those hormones man the ghrelin and all that kind of crap all of a sudden I'm hungry non-stop, non-stop. So it's hard to manage that if you feel like you have to stay within a box, right? So um, when I got off of prep last year, like I said, I just wanted to have that one meal a week where I could just do whatever I wanted. And then again, my macros were pretty high. You know, they were going up to the 2000 calorie range, that kind of thing. So I didn't feel deprived throughout the week. And then that way I didn't feel like I was retaining a ton of water. I didn't feel like I was inflamed, all those kinds of things. I still did my training. I still did my cardio, all those things. And I had a great reverse last year. Um, once I got through the six, eight weeks, whatever it was, we took it from an untracked meal to a 500 calorie meal. So it went to like, okay, I can still have a freedom here, but it needs to stay within 500 calories. Um, and then once I got through that point, at that point, my hunger levels had pretty much evened out. And then I was on my, my macro plan completely. And that 500 calorie thing was kind of probably a month or so that we did that. Um, and that worked out great too, because again, I still wasn't fully tracking it, but I knew I had to keep it within a certain limit, you know? Um, and I didn't put on a ton of body fat. I didn't put on a ton of weight and those kinds of things. It all started going to good gains versus bad gains which I think that reason right there is one of the reasons why I put on so much muscle this year because yes. my conditioning stayed really good through that whole time, time frame. And my conditioning stayed really good through my entire off season, honestly. Um, and I didn't, and I didn't have to diet hard. I keep telling you through this podcast, I mean, I felt like the prep was so easy. I was like, when is this going to get difficult? You know what I mean? Um, we had a couple of weeks where I had higher cardio and that was it. Um, my calories never really dropped a lot. I mean, I was still over 15, 1700 calories a day all the way through prep. You it's know, like it was yeah. easy. I was like, when is this going to get hard? You know what I mean? <laughs> it got hard in Hawaii, but whatever. <laughs> it, got, it got hard when it did, when we didn't yeah. want it to get hard. Correct. Exactly. It got hard when we did that. But I'm just going to laugh. I'm looking over veins in my forehead. Anyway. Um, so, you know, going into it this year, I'm going to do the same thing. So the day after the show, uh, actually the day of the show, we went and had sushi that night. And I felt like I could have eaten the whole freaking place. Like I was starving at that point because I had had my meals leading into the show, which was just almonds and rice. That was it. No protein. And then, like I said, we had prejudging and then we were there and didn't leave until finals, you know? Yeah. So that was a good like four or five hours where all I had was rice cakes and jelly and that was it. And I was starving. Yeah, there's no, we don't eat protein on show day to keep our yeah. waist tight. So it's like, right. everybody's always like, what do you want post-show? I'm like, I want protein. I was starving. And like, yeah. so then I was with Carrie and Carrie's got Taiwan coming up this week. So she wanted to go to sushi because she could have that going into show. Easy. I was like, I could eat whatever. 
But so we went on this trek through Tokyo trying to find a freaking sushi place that was open because at this point it was like nine o'clock at night. So and we went to this one place and they were closing down and like you and they told us where to go to find a 24 seven sushi bar. So we went there, but it was like another like like 15 minute walk or something to get there. And then we got there and there was a there was a waiting list to get seated. So we're like, I'm like sitting there like this. I'm like, oh my god, I just eat food. <laughs> so Carrie was like, you hate me right now, don't you? I'm like, no, I'm good. I just need food. I just need food. Whatever it is, I just need food. So so we got in there and um I literally felt like I could have eaten the whole sushi bar. It was an amazing sushi, by the way. Um, so I had a good meal. It was a decent meal there. And then the following day is when I went to Mount Fuji and I went to um, the hot springs and stuff. So I was very active the day after the show, which was good. We were you know, walking everywhere, all that kind of stuff. And the foods were like grilled meats. Again, when I had like beef and like squid and stuff like that that was like protein based. Um, so good. A couple like treats, a little I had some sorbet, that kind of thing, but nothing crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and it was all locals that were cooking everything too. So it was like, you know, it was really, it was, it was, it was a cool experience to be able to have that kind of experience. stuff, you know, um, yeah. had mochi, all that kind of stuff, you know? And then, um, I had my ramen the night that night. Cause that's what I really wanted. And then okay, the following wait, day was, question. yeah. What's mochi? Yeah. So What's it's, mochi? it's a, it's a rice, um, and they do it different, different ways, but it's a rice like cake almost it's like a rice cake and then there's bean paste on the inside so mm, okay they make them different different ways the one i had was a sweet one so it was like it was almost like dessert type but it was a, it was bean it's like bean on the inside and it's rice on the outside and it's warm okay it's, it was really good it's really good so i saw everybody um, eating that and i'm like what is this <laughs> yeah it's a right it's a rice it's a rice based cake and it's again cool. depending on how they make it like it's got you know red bean paste inside of it that kind of thing cool so cool. Yeah, a lot of people use it for carb up and all that. Yeah, um, I, saw I, did that. Not, I did not use it for carb up. I was like, I probably could have, but I stayed stuck to my foods that I brought with me because I didn't want to fuck up my digestion more than anything else. So you don't know. No, I was like, I just I'm just gonna stick with rice, rice and chicken, and we're good. You know, well, you know, it works exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so anyway, so then the following day was my travel day back, which was 48 hours in 24 hours. <laughs> So like weird. it's like so because like i left my my flight left japan left tokyo at 2 p.m on tuesday and i okay. got to seattle at 1 p.m on tuesday <laughs> so you you're going back in time basically so did you like, land and did, you were like what day is it what time is it where am yeah I? like yeah. that was the hard part it was like i was like okay so i don't i, I just said that in my check-ins with jamie i was like i don't have i have no clue how i was supposed to track this because i literally just had i saw hours. when you said that i was dying like, i was like i don't, I don't know how to track this so i'm just gonna pretend like yesterday just didn't like happen. Ever, it just doesn't <laughs> exist i don't know because it was the same thing when i went out there because i lost a day going out there so i was like yes. i don't know how to i don't know how to track this what day do i track on <laughs> yeah i was like so there's a whole day in my fitness pal with nothing on it because i was i was in the flight and that like this the time just disappeared so i was like well i'm gonna put my last meal onto this day in, in my in my fitness pal i said because it's technically technically monday i don't I, mean, I don't know so anyway so um i got plenty of steps in i walked around tokyo before i left i did that on purpose because i wanted to get activity in yeah. Um, and then through the airports and all that kind of stuff, I got tons of steps in, no problem. Didn't train, but when I got back here yesterday, I went back onto my macros hundred percent and I went train and I went to cardio and all that kind of stuff yesterday. So I still felt a little puffy and inflamed even today because it's, you know, it's only a day removed from travel. Um, try to get my water in all that kind of stuff. But the other thing too, is I started putting my water flavoring back into my water and that fucked my whole digestion up yesterday because I just haven't had any of that in like in like two weeks. You know what I mean? Yep. So I was like, I can't do that. I can't do that because it's just making me feel like crap. So um, so I probably could have gotten more water in than I did. But uh, it just my stomach got to the point where I couldn't even pull it in because of the, the, the sugar, the sugar alternatives. So, um, so anyway, today I feel fine at this point. Um, but again, I'm going to have a conversation with Jamie and I want to do the same thing this year where, you know, I can have like a free meal um, until my hunger levels even back out. And then at that point, you know, we can discuss from there what we're going to do, because for me, the hardest part is the hunger. Like 
I don't have a problem with sticking to a plan, you know, especially with macros, because you can have whatever you want as long as it fits your, into your macros of the day. But it's just those hunger pains. I'm like, God, I just want to, I just want to feel like I'm full and I can never like, you, like it's a literal, like I need food, even though I'm, and your stomach's growling, even though you just ate. And it's just like, oh my God. And I know what it is. I know it's my hormones being off, but that doesn't help. You know what no. I mean? I'm like, and I'm the I same s- way. I'm, I'm a bottomless pit. Yeah. after show and it's so frustrating to never feel full yeah and for some people too it's like you know coach I'm, I'm hungry I'm hungry and you're increasing the client's food, meals they're still hungry there's yeah. there's it's, ghrelin is still rising and yes. leptin which tells you you're full that is found in fat cells well when yep. you don't have any body fat leptin is so diminished so yep. you almost have to kind of put on a little bit of body fat out the gate to get that level to right? level back out Yep. One of the points I did want to make today, which is funny that you keep honing in on it, though, is being real with yourself. And Sean, obviously not saying this is you, but this is for athletes that I've, I've been dealing with, too. A lot of my athletes are in reverse diets right now. What is real hunger and what's emotional, right? Yeah. Because when you're coming out of a contest prep, right, It's that this is why I was so hard on myself to tell myself I'm going to treat it just like a prep. Because in a prep, the answer is always no. You know you cannot. Yeah. In a reverse diet phase, you could. That's right. You, you could got, you add got a cookie into your macros. Yeah. You could get off plan. You, you don't have a show in sight. However, right. this is why I want to stick to chicken, rice, and nut butter and my fruit like I do in prep because those are the meals that keep me satisfied. So now if I'm eating those same meals that kept me satisfied on 1,200 calories going into the Olympia, now I have those same meals but just having more volume more. of those meals. Yep. Hopefully that will diminish cravings, Yep. keep me more full. And there's some times where I'm very, very hungry and I think to myself, am I hungry right now or am I just bored and I want a snack because I know I can. And then it's taken me some time to really be real with myself. Sometimes I say, you're just bored and want a snack right now. Go grab some almonds. Maybe you just allow yourself to have that. Or sometimes I'm like, hey, Jordan, you're just looking at those cookies that are sitting in the fridge and you're just wanting that right now. Go simmer down right now. Go find something else to do. So it's really hard and it takes time to really know, is it the hormones? Mm -hmm. Is it? emotional, but no matter which one it is, you have to learn how to maintain both because just because you're hungry, unfortunately doesn't mean that you could just keep eating and eating and eating and eating because the likeliness is you're never going to be full. No, it's only going to make the metabolism roar higher. And and the more that, the more that you, that you indulge in those treats, the more you want them to like sugar is a drug. It's a drug, you know, and part of me was like, when I got home, I have my birthday cake still sit. It's an ice cream cake. It's still sitting in the freezer. I have not touched it because I was impressed with you know? my birthday. Yeah. It, it was so it's still sitting there uncut since September. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I could have a piece of that. I didn't. It's still sitting yeah. there uncut. Yeah, and I, I feel have, bad. I have, like about. But go ahead. I, I have cookies from my cookie dealer from the Olympia still sitting in the freezer. So because if I pull those out, I'm gonna start eating them, and I'm not gonna yep. be able to stop. So I had a couple there. of my uh, my clients, they sent me all kinds of things and made yeah. special treats for me. And, mm-hmm. you know, I feel bad because they're messaging me. They're like, how are the treats? And I'm like, mm-hmm. I really want one. But yeah. I'm sticking to that December 15th. Yep. You know what I mean? And yep. a lot of them said, I totally respect that, you know, but yeah. I just feel bad. Of course, I want to try their beautiful brownie that they made for me and these yeah. cakes and things like that. But I'm not going to allow myself to get into that spiral because I know that that's triggering for me. Yep. You know? Well, I think also that there's a time and a place for that too. Like the way I look at it is I'm like, okay, once I get through this time frame of where I know my hormones are all messed up, I know I can have a bite of that cake and I'll be mm-hmm. fine. Yes. Right now, no. no. Right now, I know that's just going to make me want more. Exactly. You know, um, one of the one of the guys from, the, uh, from Japan gave a, a handful of us these big, huge brownies, right? Um, and I did eat those, but I'll be honest, like, it wasn't like I wanted a lot of it because a, it's super rich, but it was made from like sweet potatoes and stuff too. So it wasn't like, overly sweet either. Yeah. So it was like, it was almost like a satiating kind of thing. And it was actually really good. And that was enough for me when it came to treats, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. again, I had a couple of little things here and there, but it wasn't like I wanted to eat the whole, the whole cake, you know what I yeah. mean? And I'm at that point now, though, you know, I'm home, like you said, that that cookie's just staring in the face, that kind of thing. And I know if I start on it, I'm not going to be able to stop. So I just need to not start on it until I get through this whole phase. Like you said, you're December 15th. 
Yeah. Once I get through this whole phase of my, I can't control my hunger levels anymore. Once I can control my hunger levels, then I can start adding those little treats into my macros and it'll be fine. Yeah. Like you have it as a post-workout treat, you know, I did that all last year. Whenever I wanted something like that, I just made sure I timed it after my training, you know, those kinds of things. And you can still have those things. There's nothing out there saying you can't, you know, it's just a matter of making sure that you can do it in a, in a controlled manner. So it doesn't screw your whole thing up. Yeah. And that's the whole thing. Like that's why I was able to have my cake and eat it too last <laughs> year because I knew how to manage it and where to put it. So it wouldn't become a problem. Right. Correct. I remember so, seeing you at cuties last year and you were finishing the, the uh, sensitive point of reversing and you were like, yeah. man, I feel so good. And yeah. um, I have a lot of flexibility right now. My yeah. macros are super high. You were in like such a great space at CCCS yeah. last year. And I was like, and, and that was you following your reverse. And I remember you yep. saying, this is like really the first time I've like really done a reverse. And yep. again, the more I hear this from people, I'm like, God damn it, Jordan, if you could just for eight weeks yeah. not be a jerk with your food, That's right. you're going to feel like that too. And That's God, right. I feel so good. I feel so yeah. good. Like I, I just do not feel gluttonous. I don't feel full and proud, you know, yep. and really where my mental space goes, that's where the physical goes. You know, that's there's right. been so many times that I've, you know, had two drizzle cookies because they were in my room and like, I've been staring at cookies like, and I don't feel the need to indulge. It's just such yeah. a different experience. And I think knowing too, you know, me, I have the December 15th in my brain, but you know, somebody may be asking like, is it that eat wheat marker? Like, when do I know? Like, I think knowing when your weight is maintaining, yeah. For multiple mm -hmm. weeks in a row, like you're not going yep. you know, too far up and uh, hormones are in a good spot. Like, so something that started happening to me is that I had, was starting to have breakouts the last couple of weeks. So I knew mm -hmm. that my hormones were rebounding. So when your face starts to clear up or you start to feel, you know, a little bit less of that. Um, and then the, the hunger hormones, just like yeah. you're saying, you're like, you don't feel so hungry or so food focused. That's how yep. you kind of know that things are starting to calm down internally and get yeah. a little bit more leveled and back to normal. Yeah. And then that and like you said, I know you can add some things in. A week too, like once you start evening back out and find a set point, you know, <clears throat> then you know you can stick on that point. Like right now, <laughs> it cracked me up. I did my, my check in this morning. I'm up five pounds from, from Japan, which is still less than what I was on stage in, in Hawaii. So I'm like, I'm fine. You're good. <laughs> That's just a little muscle fullness. I know. That's just like, muscle glycogen at this point, right? Hey, I still can get on stage right now. <laughs> totally good. From your check-in, from your, you posted your check-in this yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah. That's freaking phenomenal. Yeah, I was happy with that. I was like, you can see there's like a layer of inflammation over top of like my glutes and hamstrings and stuff, but they're full and they're round. I'm like, hey, that looks pretty good. And, and we're I, sitting your ass on a plane for 48 hours. Like, I know. So I know. Well, that's what I said too. I was like, you know, um, when I see my, my check-in this morning, I was like, this is where, if I was in condition, I want my physique to look like this, right? Because I'm a little bit fuller, yeah. I'm a little bit rounder, like my glutes are rounder, even my hamstrings are rounder, everything's rounder right now, because I've got that glycogen, I've got all that stuff, that junk food in there, but it needs to be that with the conditioning, right? right. So that's right. where I see my, my ideal physique looking, you know? Um, so that's something too, when you go through this reverse dieting phase is that you can actually see where you want your physique to go if you do it correctly. You know what I mean? Like I'm really happy with my shape and size right now. And like I said, if I was in, you know, stage shape right now, condition right now, this would be perfect. Like this would be great, you know? Yeah. So Which means um, you're that close. You're close. That's right. That's yeah. right. I'm very, very close to it. Um, you know, and then, and like I said, like that helps you to kind of visualize where you want to be as well, which I think is helpful because again, going back to the, when you're in prep, you have a specific goal you have a specific timeline that you have to hit that goal. When you go to off season, you don't have that anymore. You know what I mean? That's so you've got to create those goals. And like I said, like seeing that check in this morning, it's like, that's my goal physique right there. Right. So now I, I see that and I have a goal. You have to create whatever that goal is for you in the off season so that you still stick to your plan. Because yeah. otherwise you're not going to. If you don't have a set plan, you're, you're just going to go all over the place. Yeah. A, a confused mind does nothing, right? So Correct. you have to get yourself into a space where you're like, okay, this is what I want to be. This is where I want to be. This is what I want to look like, or this is what I want to achieve, blah, 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 blah. And then that's your focus when you're going through your reverse. Um, so that you have a goal to attain, 
you know, and, and I, I like to kind of keep myself in a, in a good space. Like last year, I put, up, put on about 15 pounds-ish, um, which for somebody my size is not, it's not a lot. It's, you know what I mean? No. Yeah. Um, for this year, I don't want to go up quite that high. I want to be 10 to 12 at most. You know, um, I don't need that much more size anymore. My upper body is fine. I don't need nothing on my upper body. We're good. No. You know, it's just, it's just my lower body that needs to grow a little bit more. So again, going back to... I'm also in my 40s. You got to be careful of skin. You got to be careful of those rebounds Waste. because yep. you freaking explode and you come back down. Your skin doesn't have the elasticity that it did when you're in your 20s. So you got to be careful of that stuff. And that all, that all that stuff will show up when you get stage lean again. You know, yep. one of the biggest things I was concerned about this year getting stage lean was I was afraid I was going to have loose skin, you know, because of my age. And as I got there, I was like, I got nothing. I'm like, I got nothing hanging. I'm like, this is good. Like, this is really, really good. And again, this goes back to why I think I can be competitive right now with this look in Masters because I don't have any of those issues. Um, but like I said, in, in order for me to get back on stage again, I want to be better when I get back on stage. Um, so, you know, again, I'm going to talk to Jamie about plans going forward. But if I stay in this zone here with my reverse what that means is is that as i'm growing because you can take a lot of advantage of gains right after a show if you do it if you do it well you can put on a lot of muscle right after a show because your body is just primed and ready for it right that's why girls either gain a ton of body fat because your or body ton, is yep. so sensitive or you yep. do it or a ton, of muscle. a ton of muscle that's right so guess what my first training session was it was legs yesterday <laughs> I was like, it was legs. I was like, I'm going to grow these sticks. I'm going to grow them. You want, you, Tyler, you want more legs? Yes, I, know, I got it. I got it. I was like, I'm not even going to grow. I'm not even going to hit glutes. I'm going to hit legs. Legs. All of it. <laughs> I was like, which is also probably why I'm a little bit inflamed today because I did go heavy oh, left on legs yesterday. 100%. You know what I mean? So you can think all those things. You keep all those things in the back of your head. And um, But this, again, I know that if I stay true to my plan right now, I can, I can gain real quick. So I'm going to do that, you know, and, and as you setting your own goals, you got to figure out what that is so that you can take advantage of this season. Like there's a lot you can do in this season right now when you get out of show, if you're focused, right? Absolutely. One um, of the first things I did when I got back from the Olympia is I had, and it's up on YouTube. We did a whole YouTube series about it. Um, I did an assessment with one of my trainers at my gym, yeah. Javier. He took me through an hour long assessment of movement patterns and different strengthening exercises. And we found a lot of weaknesses. Yeah. Um, and then he built a program for me based on that. So I had my training block ready to go the week after the Olympia. And that's also something that is really important that I think post shows, you know, some, some clients need a week off from the gym just to relax and give their mm -hmm. body a break and whatever. I've done that too. This year, I wanted to get into the gym right away because I wanted to use the weights and that yeah. sensitivity to try to put on muscle right away. Same. Also for me too, I feel like the more muscle I have, the more food I can process better. So yeah, I just wanted absolutely. to go right into that as soon as I could and establish that goal for myself. If I had that training block and I knew what the intent was and I know what that goal is, that I want to look like X by this date. That's right. I, I now have that goal that I've been working on. It's not a show date but it's a date for me to know that I want to see my glutes looking like this by February of next year. That's right. Um, so just switching the goals, you know, prep yep. is prep. I love what Julia says. She always says prep, or I'm sorry, um, improvement season is her prep. That's right. It is. I, I mean, mean there's a reason fine. why you look at the photos from last year versus this year with my physique. There's a reason why I put on so much size yep. because I really took my reverse and my off season seriously. Like very seriously, because I was like, I know this is my, for me too, I was like, this is my last chance for my best look on the open stage. I knew that in the back of my head. Like, I, I know that this is, this is it right here. This is it. Like I knew that as of last year. So like, I, you know, that, that put extra, I don't, I don't want to say the word pressure because it's not pressure, but it urgency. Yeah. Put extra urgency on it. Right. And yeah. I wanted to make sure that I, that I really nailed it um, for that reason. So you know, going back to, you just got to figure out what that is for you, what that goal is for you, and what that urgency creation is for you so that you can, you can do that for yourself. Um, and it did, it made a huge difference. And I know if I do the same focus this time, when I go to get back on stage again, it's going to be even better, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, 
And it's just, it's just the proof is in the pudding. I mean, you look at the photos, you look at the videos, you see the before and afters. I mean, there's, there's a reason why we, we take this part seriously and why you should take it seriously because it makes the biggest difference. Yeah. It really does. It and really I think does. that goes, you know, I tell, um, you know, amateurs all the time, you know, especially as they're preparing for the national stage, anytime that you want to skip a rep or skip a set or skip a macro, you have to ask yourself, what would a pro do? And listen, all pros are not, uh, perfect. You know, uh-huh. uh, Sean and I are talking right now. We've definitely had some drinks and we've had some fun. Absolutely. And, you know, yeah. We're, we're, we're people too, but that's right. we know, we know how to balance it. There's got to yep. be balance and we know the bigger picture and we make decisions based off the bigger goals. And I think as if an amateur, you can establish that kind of discipline and mind frame now. Mm-hmm. Holy moly, by the time you make it to the pro league, you're going to be so far ahead. It took that's me right. to be, get, turning pro to get to this point of now, oh, okay, this is important. I need to do this. If I would have yep. done this years ago, who knows? We'll see how this next next prep goes. I'm curious to see if it's just as easy as yours now that I'm actually yeah. following it in reverse, right? Yeah. And so it matters. And I, I just want to keep reiterating how good I feel yeah. you know, fr- from sticking to it. And that's that's the biggest part right there. wants to vacuum right here while... <laughs> it's okay. I've been here for an hour, but... <laughs> Sorry, no worries. Yeah. It's all good. I get honestly the background noise isn't isn't too bad, and I'm gonna stick it into my my editor and try to pull out whatever I can, um, just so that we can get rid of anything in the back. So it's it's all good. It's not a problem. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I wish I'd known about reverse dieting when I first started competing. I think it I think it would have made a huge difference in my whole career. You know what I mean? That's what we talked about this before. It's like there's just so many things that have changed over the last ten years in this sport. And, you know, this last year was a great example of that. I mean, it's just like, if I had done this from the start, who knows where I'd be right now? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just, and it's something just as simple is. as following lab work after a show. Yeah. Like knowing internally what has been abused from yeah. us being so lean and just getting, getting addressed right away. You know, yep. getting you healthy as soon as possible. Like, just very simple things that weren't talked about years ago because people didn't right. know. They didn't now know. there's so much out there to uh-huh. be able to help us and give us those tools to have a successful reverse. It's really there if you want it. You got to reach yep. out for it. You got to follow it. But it's 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 available. Absolutely. So as we as we're doing it here, it's available, right? Yes. <laughs> like the podcast and all that. There's tons of information. Tons out there now. of information. Yes. So I did get a bunch of questions. I thought we could go through a few of them to kind of yeah. finish out today. Um, let me see where are they at. So one of the questions was if I was uh, if I'd be able to, or willing to compete in the masters division, and yes, obviously. Um, so um, I think that having the masters divisions is a fantastic thing because um, at the end of the day, like I said, you just want to feel like you're valued on stage. You know, you want to feel like what work you put in off stage is is rewarded when you get on stage. That's why I love Japan so much, and we now have. Like I said, the, all these Masters shows, but also Masters Olympia, which is awesome, which means that as a competitor, you can literally compete your entire life and do it on really prestigious stages. So there's nothing wrong. I think people have this perception of Masters being less than. It's actually more than, to be honest with you, because it's a hell of a lot harder to be in shape, this kind of shape, when you're in your 40s, 50s, and 60s than it is when you're in your 20s. I'm like, I'm and you sorry. think the bikini criteria and feedback in the open is hard? It's even yeah. worse than the masters. Yeah. They are looking, they expect so much out of you guys. They yeah. want a tight waist, good skin, this look. It's hard. It's yep. that is that division, masters bikini is very hard. It very much is. And it's like, you know, for me, when I was in my 20s, I could go out drinking all night, wake up the next morning and drop 10 pounds and look phenomenal. You know what I mean? Like, you can't do that shit when you're in your 40s. Not I'm as like, forgiving. Like if I go out and drink at night, I'm I'm down for three days. <laughs> like Me too. ten times harder. It's ten times harder in the masters division. And yeah. you like again, you get treated just as great in the masters as you do in the open. So it's like, you know, at the end of the day, there's gonna be a couple of people that win that that Olympia title, which is awesome. That's fantastic. But it's not gonna make a huge difference on your overall life. No as a regular competitor, you know, you still got to have a job. Like we talked about this before, you still got to have a job. You still have to have income. You still have to have all that kind of stuff. So this competing is always, and will always be a hobby. So 
regardless of if you're doing it on the open stage or if you're doing it on the master stage, it's still the same thing. You know what absolutely. I mean? It's just creates its own challenges and its own rewards from it. You know, so yes. absolutely, hundred percent. I'm in. I'm in for masters. So, um, and I, I think you, you probably guys would heard be too. it. You guys heard it first. I know, right? I think you probably would be too once you get to this age. You know what I mean? Like it just it just is what it is. And then you get to put yourself onto a playing field where you're up against people just like you, versus yes. me putting myself against girls that are 20 years younger. You know, yes. it just is what it is. They can be my children. Like literally, they could be my children. So. <laughs> I love like y'all could be my daughters, like for for real. So and, and anyway, you look damn good. For it. <laughs> I know, right? Um, so let's see. Um, this one kind of goes into what we said with reverse. So tips on handling having a bigger body in the off season. Um, I like my body bigger in the off season. We've talked about this before. I like being fuller. I like being rounder. I like my off season better than I do my in season. So. Um, maybe do you have some, some tips on, on your end over there? So, uh, this is a hard one for me. I, and it's only hard because like I said, I've had such terrible reverses. So I've hated my off season body. I've hated mm -hmm. the amount of body fat that I put on. Mm -hmm. Um, I love where I'm at right now. I love it. Yeah. Um, my husband loves it. I actually yeah. asked him the other day we, we were whatever. And, um, he, I was like, how's my, my glutes look? He's like, they could be a little bit fuller for me. And I'm like, Okay. Um, so my husband likes a little it. bit. Yeah, he likes a little bit rounder, and he, he listen. He loves me anyway, but he yeah. You know, he always said like you got like you know your eight pack abs. You're just so intimidating. It's like yeah, oh, like, you're just so like fragile. Yeah, you're gonna <laughs> you know? break in half. <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously, obviously, I love seeing myself lean because I love seeing my hard work. Um, it's really funny though because like when I look at girls that you know have reversed a little bit and they're like about five or eight pounds stage weight. I like their look better yes. that way Agreed. than when they're stage lean. And I have to remember that about myself. Like, I'm like, oh, you know, do I look good? Is people going to yeah. think I look fat? Blah, blah, blah. And then I hear everybody saying, dude, you look so damn good right now. I just look really yeah. healthy. And I'm like, yep. okay. So yeah. if I could stay, like I said, in this 125 to 130 range, I think I'm going to be really happy. Um, I love the way I look and I feel right now. I think it's yeah a good amount. I know I need a little bit more to, and I hope the scale continues to increase because I'm training really hard right now. So obviously I want to gain tissue. So I'm not trying to get too in my head about that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard. It's a hard answer. <laughs> well, for me, oh, and this is something I didn't, I don't think I've even mentioned this. I actually dropped under 140 for, um, for Japan. So I was 139 for Japan, um, versus almost 140, almost 146 in, in Hawaii. Okay. So there was that. Um, but yeah, when I, when it's not inflammation weight, I actually feel like I look my best around like the 147 to 150 range. Um, once I go up and over 150, I get to like 152. That's pushing it. Once I'm once I'm up and over 152, I'm like yeah, a little bit, a little squishy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I like to be somewhere in that probably 147 to 152 range, somewhere in there. Um, sometimes I got to get a, bit, a little bit. Last year I got a little bit heavier than that because I need to put the size on. This year, I don't really want to do that. I want to, I want to stay 152 or lower. Um, and I like, again, I still look athletic. I still have my abs. I still have the fullness. I still have the glutes popping and things like that. But I don't feel like I'm puffy anywhere. I don't feel like I'm squishy anywhere. Um, there's a difference between feeling like you're um, in shape and feeling like you're squishy, you know? Correct. Um, so that, for me, is a good range. Um, where I was... The couple of weeks, you know, when my conditioning was good, going into Hawaii, and then also in Japan with the veins everywhere and all that kind of stuff, it's cool to see, but it's gross. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I don't want to live there. I still, I, they've, they've actually calmed down since this morning. I'm still so vascular. I mean, my stomach, like you guys saw it in, at Olympia, like my stomach is ridiculous with the veins. Like it's ridiculous. And I'm like, that's that's like lumpy and bumpy, and like I'm like like alien like again it's cool to see it's cool to see the conditioning come that far but i think it's gross like i don't even want it like people are like are you gonna do some photo shoots and stuff I'm like no i wouldn't want that in my photo shoot i get i no. get that i wouldn't want uh -uh. that in my photo shoots either i'm like this is, this is gross it's nasty so yeah. when that starts to go away because even now i still got the veins everywhere even though i'm a little bit inflamed i still have the veins everywhere you know what i mean so um once that vascularity starts to calm down is where i feel like i look my best you know um, so I, I, I don't have a problem with a bigger body. I think when we're talking about bigger bodies, you just, you just got to know where your limit is. You know, I do yeah. think that 
again, once I get up, up and over that 152, that's when I start getting squishy. That's when I start not liking it anymore. So you got to know where your limit is. You got to know how to keep maintain where you are for your limit. Yeah. And I think, too, just you going, you what you said is, you know, the more muscle that you know you have to put on, the expectation is that you're probably going to gain a little bit more body fat. Right. But as you start mm-hmm. to fine tune and the smaller amount of muscle or the fine tuning you shouldn't have to put on more than 10 to 12 pounds. That's probably Correct. a good range. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's what, what's the goal for that season? You know, somebody's first improvement season, they're probably going to put on a little bit more body fat than, yes. than, than hopefully they ever have to again, just because of yep. the amount of tissue that they have to have. That's right. So um, next question. So that this was a couple of them in, in, in one, there's a bunch of questions here. We can go through some of them. I want to stick with, we want to kind of stick with our topic so they basically wanted to hear more about competing in the masters and the open level at the pro at the pro level and then kind of cover that a little bit and then how do you qualify for the masters olympia so when it comes to the masters olympia it's kind of like the arnold you have to apply for it so um the arnold has specific requirements as far as you have to have one shows and things like that in order to um even apply for the arnold for the masters olympia right now it's just an, an application you give them your um your background, your resume, all that kind of stuff. And they look you up and, and decide if they're going to accept you or not. That's currently. Now, they've only done one Masters Olympia, so that could change going into the next one. Um, Which is two years from two now, years. not next year. Not this coming year, but 2025 is when the next one will be. So that's why I said, for me, like I really want to compete this coming year in some Masters Pro shows and hopefully get some decent placings because that will make my resume look good to apply for the Masters Olympia in 2025. So uh, cool. Great. Yeah. I love yeah. That. So that's awesome. That's the plan for me. Like in order to do that again, you have to you, you have to have some wins or some top fives and blah blah blah, that kind of thing, in order for them to want to accept you into the Masters Olympia. So that's the, that's the goal. So um there's not a this is what you do to qualify. It's a build a resume and then you apply. Got it. Yeah, for the Olympia. For the Master Olympia. Um, and then this is probably a good one. Um, biggest surprise, good or bad of the year. This particular person said that hers was Laura Lee showing up the way she did at Olympia. So what do you think was your biggest surprise for this year? Huh. I need a minute to think about that. I yeah. don't know. I would say that that's probably that would probably be mine too the the, the situation with Laura Lee because I expected you know, that I don't know just from yeah the you way, said that she, yeah I, I don't I watch her train and like I said yeah. I'm, I'm jealous I love the yeah. way she trains I wish I could train that way but I don't because I know that my legs would be too big I, yeah. I there's no way I could train that hard and that that many compound movements and not my my legs not grow um, so yeah. I expected that. I didn't see, I didn't pay attention to all that. So for me, it was more, you know, I saw how she looked at the Arnold and I was assuming she was going to bring a similar look because I was just like, you know, she knows that's what won her the Arnold. Um, and they told her not to change anything. So in my head, I'm thinking, don't change anything. You come yeah, in yeah. and you look like you, you win the Olympia, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I really thought she was going to be in the top two, if not winning it. And uh, no, I definitely thought she should have, or, thought she would place higher i did yeah i did yeah but yeah I, I so while it. you're thinking of that let's talk about this for a second because the first time she placed second was to angelica who yeah is coming back now so yes. angelica's coming back i uh um, so, just catching up on social media and all that yeah. because people were buzzing about it and then i did some snippets of she was on jay cutler's podcast and yep. that's where she announced it Yep. Yeah. I watched I think that's um, I, I love Angelica. I think she's amazing. I think she was one of the best ambassadors for, for our sport period for bikini. Um, she's a real she testament. Of, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's nice to everyone. You know, she's, she's so she knows everyone. It's like, I, I swear she knows everybody. She knows you when she, when, even if you never met her. Um, and she was just like, she's just very driven and focused. And you can just see, like, if you watch the podcast about her whole journey, about what she had to go through in order to even become a pro, like, it's crazy, you know? Yeah. Um, with that said, with her coming back now, she's pushing 40. Um, she's got two kids. You know, it's been a while since she's been on stage. So what are your thoughts? Do you think she can be so competitive at that top level? 
I mean, obviously none of us has seen her physique. We see her right. kind of, you know, with clothes on. She's definitely holding a great shape. She's She's got great conditioning right now and things like that. Yeah. I, we don't know her skin and things after babies, yep. but she ba- seemed very confident in her physique. Yep. Um, she also seems very confident. She could come back and be competitive. She's been doing this for a really long time. Um, mm-hmm. Not only that, she shows up to shows. She's a commentator. She knows exactly what they're picking. Yep. So she feels that strongly about it. I'm going to assume that she knows that she's bringing, bringing good package. But no matter what, what, she's, what she's trying to stand for is the ability to not just come back and step on stage as a mom she said I'm coming back to be competitive again yeah and I was like damn like that's really cool and so inspiring and a true testament to babies reverse dieting you can Mm -hmm. hold your physique and stay healthy as long as you are taking care of yourself and making that's right good choices to you know stay healthy um and she's one again that's been, been in shape her whole life you know what I mean going back to the skin texture and all those kinds of things that matters, you know, that makes a difference. Even, you know, she had two kids. So I don't know what her stomach looks like, Absolutely. but look at in India. India had a kid and came back. Her tummy's fine. Yep. You know, and she kept yep. herself in shape. So yep. um, I think it's going to probably be a similar situation to India, to be honest with you. I think she's going to come back and I think she's still going to do well. I think she can still win shows. I don't think she's going to be able to retain or win back the Olympia title. I don't think she's going to be able to do that. Um, but the amount five, of muscle now, what, what couple just, reasons? Okay, a couple of reasons. Um, a when she was on her way out, like her last season before she had kids and stuff like that, the issue with her was her conditioning. She was, um, she was always still a little bit soft in her backside. Um, when you look at her shapes that actually won the Olympia, she didn't have a huge delt, you know, she had always had the glutes, her delts weren't huge. Um, her shape wasn't quite as cartoonish as like a Jen Dory, right? Um, we're seeing more cartoonish looking shapes at the top level now uh, versus I actually really like Angelica's shape. I think it's very attainable and I like that, but that's not what's being rewarded in the top three. You know what I mean? Um, so the too so, much muscle factor now. Yeah, I think she I think she doesn't, unless she's able to to, to grow, you know, I don't think she's got the, the, the upper body to, to hang with the top girls. Um, and I think that her conditioning on her lower half is what's going to probably be her Achilles heel. Um, now, that's not to say, I think, again, I think she can still win smaller pro shows. Like, I think she can still win a pro show. Um, I just don't see her taking the Olympia title back. Um, yeah. I could see because her to be fair, she's been off, right? So yeah. maybe, she, maybe she has more density in the glutes. Maybe she's yeah, training. she might. Absolutely. She might. And that, and that might play. Yeah. That might play well for her too. be, like I said, the age thing, if you keep yourself in shape, same thing happened to me. I get better as I get older because I've kept myself in shape, you know, so that could play well for her. Um, I think she can still be a first call out girl at the Olympia. Uh, I think she could potentially still be a top five girl at the Olympia winning your title back. Probably not. No, that's a probably that's a probably yeah. I'm not yep. going to count anybody out. And that's still, friggin' amazing. Like, don't get me wrong. You know, that's Absolutely. amazing. Absolutely. But again, you got to go back to thinking, okay, she's almost 40. She's got two kids. You know, we need to be realistic. She's going up against girls that are in their twenties. Yep. Right. So yeah. Pro shows. Yes. She can win Olympia. Mm. Probably not. Probably not. Top, top five, top five. Yep. Yeah. I can see her in top five. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. yep, I can see her back Plus, on top for sure. She's a coach for Fit Body Fusion. So of course, <laughs> yeah. we're going to support her. Girl. <laughs> of course. And then, again, that's not, you know, that's, that's amazing. If she's able to do those kinds of things, that's amazing. Like, I'm, I'm just trying to be realistic about things of again, course. going back to what the realist, realistic expectations should be. Now, for her, she wants to win her title back. So she's obviously very determined. She's obviously been able to beat the odds in the, in the past. So I'm not going to put that past her. Um, I don't think it's an impossibility. It's an improbability, but a not yep. an impossibility. So can she? Prob- she could. Is she? Probably not. That's my, yep. that's my, that's my two cents. That's what she says. Okay. Okay. So, so now has that given you enough time to think about your biggest surprise for the year? <laughs> yeah. Can I, can I say myself? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to say myself. When there you go. Hurricane. I mean, yeah. obviously I was not expecting that. We all talked about that and yeah. I was up against Ari who ended up coming seventh in the Olympia. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So yeah, I'm gonna say myself. Because <laughs> I was go. shocked. <laughs> hey, you gotta be your own biggest cheerleader. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, <laughs> if you don't believe it, nobody else is going to, right? So ain't that the truth? Yep. Yeah. No, I like that. I like that. Um, and I think that's a good place to end the podcast, don't you? Yeah, I love <laughs> this one. This was a good one. I'm excited yeah, for this one. It was so needed. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun kind of seeing how we do through our reverses and our off season and stuff like that too. And together. And, um, yeah. and I want people to, to write in and stuff too, because I know a lot of people are going into this right now, you know, we're going into the holidays. It's hard to manage the holidays. We can talk about that. Maybe next time we can talk about how to manage the holidays and, and the expectations and things like that with your training and diet and stuff too. Absolutely. Um, I mean, this weekend is really like the last shows of the year. We got Dallas. Uh, and and the nationals Iowa next week. Blur nationals next week that's right yep. so yeah everybody you know in two weeks all of us are sitting in off season together that's here. Right. so yes let's support each other everybody now take the time like we said to pre-plan have those conversations with your coach think about maybe what you need and what your needs yep. are for a successful reverse diet and set set that communication ahead of time so that you have that accountability with your coach and you've already had that plan all yes. of us all of us thrive in this sport on routine and OCD mm -hmm. and structure. Mm -hmm. So why That's would we right. not have that same focus and that same plan for our off season? hundred percent. Absolutely. So, and with that, as soon as we hang up here, Jamie's going to be calling me in about a half an hour and setting my, my whole structure in place. And then you're going to share that with us next week. Of course, of <laughs> course. Like I said, I, you know, I got so many people that wrote in on my Insta stories and stuff and thanked me for being so open about my journey and transparent and things like that. And, you know, I do that on purpose because, you know, a lot of times we see the good parts of, of all this stuff, but there's a lot of bad parts too, you know, and, and being real about that, I think is important because, you know, we don't, it's not always butterflies and rainbows and unicorns, you know what I mean? So no, sometimes a lot of people it's... show up on Instagram only when they're, eating, and only mm -hmm. when they're getting ready for a show. And then when they're in yep. off season, where, where are they, where do they yep. go? And it sets an unrealistic expectation of, of us in this sport and that's why right. so many girls think that you have to stay stage lean all year because their favorite bodybuilders are only posting when they're stage lean that's right um, so i appreciate that too and i try to show up the same way on my social and you know try yep. to show that I, i'm increasing in body fat too and this is normal this is where yeah. we have to be you know and that's why i you know that's why i put my check-in pictures up today just like normal put my my routine up just like normal because it's it's a it's life hard, though and it's vulnerable yeah. for us you know, when, when I, I, I'm sure you feel the same way. As soon as I hit that post button, I'm like, oh, I hope this is okay. Yeah. I hope this proceed the right way. I hope I look okay. You know, it's it's hard. And but yeah. I want to show up authentic, and I want to make sure that everyone knows all seasons of life. Yeah, in sport, and and that you like know, saying, even if you screw up, you can turn it back around. You know, absolutely, it's okay. Yes. It's okay to screw up because we all screw up. Every one of us. A hundred percent. And I, I that's to end it, my last thought is I had a client and she had a really terrible reverse diet. And obviously now she's kicking herself for it. But I said, when you turn pro one day, this is going to be your impactful story. Yeah. You're going to help so many athletes when you decide to share this story of that's how right. your reverse went and how bad it was and the mental. And this is going to help you one day. And our experiences and our mess ups help us along the way help others. So yeah. it's, it's okay. It's, listen, you're probably going to blow your first reverse mm -hmm. as long as you learn mm -hmm. from it. Yep. Learn from it and pivot. That's yep. all you can do. That's right. That's right. Yes. So, well, we got our podcast in for this week. I'm proud of us. Even with all the Me traveling. Yes. <laughs> Being in, in various time zones and different days and all those kinds of crazy. Yes. <laughs> well, enjoy your, um, your, your, what is it? Is it a retreat? Personal development course. Yes. There you go. Personal development yes. course. Um, I'll get this podcast out. I know you won't be able to communicate because you got to get rid of your phone for a few days. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, we'll circle back around uh, once it's over and we'll start off with another podcast again next week. Thank you guys, everyone, for um, following along with our journeys, all that stuff, too, and all of the wonderful feedback that we've been getting. Got to say this at the beginning. If you haven't done so already, subscribe, like, comment, all of the fun stuff. Um, and then we will see you back here again next week and enjoy your weekend. Bye, guys. Bye.